It's a beautiful evening that we are here, and a blessed night indeed because I have a visitor all the way from Kenya, Bishop John Liro. He's a very good friend of mine. He's been to America several times, and he's, uh, he's blessed of God. He's a man who's written uh, several books. When I say several, there are several, and there are many. I think there are more, more than ten, but he's going to tell us more about himself. He has his ministry in Nairobi, and uh, he's, uh, he has a family. He's blessed with a family, and uh, he's going to tell us more about himself as we going to welcome him now. So, Bishop Nero, karibu sana na sema vile mungu anaongea na wewe siku ya leo. Hallelujah. Karibu sana. Uh, tunashukuru mungu kwa siku ya leo. Kwa sababu God has just opened for us to have this wonderful moment. As you heard from my brother, I'm Bishop John Muliro. I have a ministry called BBR. Bible reality. We have a church in Nairobi, in a place called Tena. And uh, it's a blessing to be with you this moment. Uh, uh, I have written several books and I will share something from one of my books that is called Wake, Waking Up the Giant Within You. I want to share about waking up the giant within you or steps towards moving to another level in life. And our verse is from the book of Mika or Micah chapter 2 verse 10. The first part of it, Micah chapter 2, verse 10. The Bible says, Arise and go, for this is not the place for rest. Arise and go, for this is not a place for rest. There is something that happened in my home in western Kenya. A neighbor saw a hippo sleeping on the banks of a river or river Nzoya in western Kenya. And the man thought that it was dead because it was covered by flies and it was deep in sleep. Then this man went and called neighbors and he said, come and celebrate on the dead hippo, on the meat of the dead hippo. And people came carrying swords. Others were carrying baskets to go and celebrate or have a, a, a cut of the, meat, of the meat. And when they arrived, one man was carrying a spear. And he said, this hippo is dead. Can we thrust in a spear before we start cutting the meat? But others said, no, it's deep, it's dead. Why waste time? And then they started cutting the meat. But before, when the one man just raised up his sword and cut part of the body, the hippo woke up and majestically returned in the water. And something that happened was no one could stand against the hippo when it woke up. And something came to my mind about a giant sleeping in a wrong place. You find when a giant is sleeping in a wrong place, anything can happen to it. There are things that cover it that is not supposed to cover it. So there are many giants who are sleeping of resting in the wrong place. And what happens? They lose, a, they, they miss a lot of opportunities and they can be covered by things that they are not supposed to be covered with. Therefore, I will start by talking more about one of the sons of Jacob that was a giant, a man that was gifted. But the nature of his nature was that he loved rest. And therefore, he became a slave under forced labor. 
That's why I still remind you of the verse. Arise and go. For this is not your resting place. The son, one of the sons of Jacob was called Issachar. Issachar, the Bible first, the, the book of First Chronicles, chapter 12, verse 32. The Bible says, and the sons of Issachar, men who understood the times with knowledge of what Israel should do. Their chiefs were 200 and all their kinsmen were the commanders, were the commanders. Look, the Bible talks of people who are gifted. The tribe of Isaac were rewarded and the name Isaac means reward. These people were rewarded. Bible says by understanding the times. There were things that they were rewarded with. Number one is that they were rewarded with understanding the times. And the tribe of so these people were had insight of what God's plan was. They could easily understand God's timing of things which were present, past, and future. And also, because of their knowledge of times and the Torah, these people were the ones in charge of Israel's biblical calendar. They were custodian of the calendar of Israel because they would tell the appointed times and seasons of when Israel should observe events. They could discern what God was about to do and they were and what they were doing. They would discern God's will and the appointed time to fulfill it. And the season for God to usher in new things or new leadership. Therefore, these were people gifted. And that's why it would say that these people understood the times when to usher in new king and when to usher in new events, even when to celebrate the feast in Israel. And it's important when you want to move to another level to understand the times you are in. I've written a book on understanding your seasons. And I think one day we will share about understanding and walking in your seasons. So these people were men who are gifted because a wise heart knows the proper time and procedure. Because God has made everything beautiful at its time. So these were potential people because they would understand what was supposed to be done. Because time never waits for us. And therefore it's important to know when to move, when to, what to do. What is, what is God speaking to you about this time? Because we are effective when we do things at the appointed time. Jesus knew the secret of doing things at the appointed time. He never made decisions out of pressure. People used to force him that he would do this. But they would not, he would not do things because of their pressure by marching. So it's very important for us to understand the times because sometimes we may be forced to do things which you are not ready for it and it's not at a timing for it. We have to wait for the appointed time. Remember, I'm talking about awakening the potential within you, praising 
open up the giant within you. So sometimes we overstay in a place which we are not supposed to do. And therefore, these men of Issachar were men who understood the times. To do things that go to the time. Because sometimes impatience is costly. And waiting is the weapon that reveals the right things and what God wants you to do in life. Because wait, waiting reveals your true motives and waiting is testing time. So the men of Issachar were men who are potential, who are giants, who understood the times. Number two, these were gifted people. They had knowledge of what was to be done. They had knowledge, they understood times, and number two, they had knowledge of what was supposed to be done. Because the tribe of Issachar was, was full of scholars, people who devoted themselves to starting of time to, to teach the Torah, and therefore they had knowledge of what was supposed to be done. It's believed that most Jewish scholars were either from the tribe of Levi or Levi or the tribe of Issachar. Because the, these were men who were wise. And even this belief that among the wisest men, tri, men among the Sanhedrin were from the tribe of Issachar. So these were men who were gifted. These were giants. These were people who knew what to do. People had enough knowledge. But remember, knowledge brings responsibility. The more you know, the great demand to put that knowledge in action. It is dangerous to have more knowledge and you don't utilize that knowledge. Because the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 18 that talks about increasing knowledge results in increasing pain. The more you know and the more you don't put in action that knowledge, it's so painful. The more you know, the more it hurts if you don't put that knowledge in action. Knowledge puffs up if it's not well used. So these were people who are knowledgeable. These were giants. And remember, knowledge put in action brings pleasure to your soul. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 10 says, Wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will give you pleasure. Wisdom will enter your heart, but knowledge will give you pleasure. Because the more you put your knowledge in action, the more it brings pleasure to your soul. What about if you have knowledge and you don't put that knowledge in action? What happens? It's painful to know that this is what is supposed to be done and you are doing nothing about it. But also remember, in other hands, ignorance is costly because people who have acquired special knowledge have something to say to the world. They have to get knowledge. You will find people want you. You want to buy your knowledge. You want, uh, you will call you to speak your, out what you know because champions or people who do a lot in life are people who are well informed. And now something about knowledge. I'm talking about the sons of Israel who are giants. But at the end we'll see what happened. They were giants who were sleeping at the wrong place. We will see that this from the blessings that Jacob spoke about them in Genesis chapter 49. So knowledge put in action brings a reward. The more you know, and you put that knowledge in action, it brings a reward. So these men of Isaac were rewarded 
and they put and also they were leaders among or the commanders in that among the tribes of israel they were leaders the leadership scheme perhaps i'll not talk more about leadership but i want to see i want us to go to a place where we see what happened with these knowledge people what happened with them what were the prophetic blessings that the father talked about them and what happened with this knowledge do they put it in action uh if you read in genesis 49 genesis 49 verse 14 to 15 now we are coming to see the giants here it says that isaac is a strong donkey lying down between the sheep folds when he saw that resting place was good and that the land was pleasant he bowed his shoulders to bear bodies and became slaves to bear bodies and became slaves to forced labor look at that that is like a strong donkey lying down between the sheep falls and when he saw that the resting place was good and that the land was pleasant he bowed his shoulders to bear burdens and became a slave to forced labor who are these these are the sons of Isaac. people who are gifted people who are not who are with knowledge people who understood times but they became slaves under forced labor this were the prophetic blessings that jacob speaks about his son compares isaac to a strong donkey or ass that is lying or situated or lying between two burdens this means that though Isaac would live in a land that was pleasant, they would be compelled to do the work of a slave. <clears throat> they will stay in the land that was complacent. They were gifted by strong donkeys, but they would be compelled to do the work of a slave. How can a man who's knowledgeable a man who understands time, a man who is gifted, a custodian of Israel's calendar, becoming a slave under forced labor. It says that Isaac is a strong donkey, and when he saw that the resting place was good and that the land was pleasant, he followed it. To do what? to do forced labor a gifted person a man who knows what to do is in a wrong place doing wrong things because he loves rest and comfort the people who are gifted who are giants they are great things they can do because, but because of their nature, they have raised, they love comfort, they are doing the work that they're not supposed to do. What happens when you are operating in the wrong place? There are things that will happen when you are operating in the wrong place. You will do things that you are not supposed to do. It is even believed that a, a lion is a coward in a strange land so when you are operating in the straw in the strange land you become a slave to a forced labor you do things you're not supposed to you become a coward so when Isaac saw that the place was good and the land was pleasant it became a slave to forced labor and let us look at the blessings of 
Moses upon Isaac. Remember, when Jacob looked at his sons, he was giving a prophetic blessing upon each son. One day I'll talk about the sons of Jacob and talk about this and this and share about more about the blessings. So Jacob looks at the son and says, that man is gifted. That man has knowledge. That man is strong. But his nature is that he loves comfort and rest. And therefore, he becomes a slave under forced labor. But let us look at the prophet, prophetic, prophetic blessings of Moses upon Isaac, which will tell us about waking up, arising, and moving forward. And then as we continue, we look at stages of coming out of comfort zone, zones and doing something great. What, how many stages of life are we supposed to operate in to become effective in our calling? So the prophetic blessings of Moses upon Isaac in Deuteronomy 33, verse 18 to 19. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 18 to 19, it says, Rejoice, Zebulon, in your going out. It says, Rejoice, Zebulon, in your going out, and Isaac in your tents. Sorry. It says, Rejoice, Zebulon. In your going out, and Isaac in your tents, you will feast on the abundance of the sea and the hidden treasure of the sea. They shall offer righteous sacrifices, for they shall draw out the abundance of the sea and the hidden treasure of the sun. When, Mo when Moses is blessing the sons of Jacob, of the tribes of Israel, he comes to Zebulon and Isaac and speaks a blessing that are yoked together. Because the prophetic blessing of Jacob upon, of Moses upon Isaac reveals that Isaac and Zebulon will be yoked together. And that one of Jacob reveals that Isaac would be a strong donkey. That means because of laziness, he will do the work that is not supposed to be his. So the tribe of Isaac, they are blessing that yoke together the tribe of Zebulon. And we will see more about it as time goes by. Why were they yoked together? But before that, let us see that the tribe of Isaac was tough, but sexual for its way and accepted slavery. Slavery, slavery. They were tough tribes. And I want to confirm to you that these were giants, that these were tough, tough people. In the book of Judges, chapter 5, verse 12, the Bible says, And the prince, princes of Isaac were with Deborah, as was Isaac. Was so was Bala into the valley. They rushed at his at his enemies. Among the division of Reuben, there were great souls of hearts. That the tribe of Isaac accompanied Deborah and Barak, and they rushed. They were tough in war. There were people who were tough when they meant to do something. They could do it with all their heart. And I want you to understand, success is not determined by what you have, but by what you do with what you have. Success, success is not determined by what you have, but by what you do with what you have. The people who have everything they need in life to succeed, the people have everything they need in life to do greater things. But they are doing nothing with it. 
So they are still in that place of resting. Therefore, seek for opportunities where you are. Seek for opportunities where you are. Because you have everything that is needed to succeed. But perhaps some of us, the nature of Issachar, that is of comfort and rest in the wrong place, have stolen away or have made us to be beggars, have made us to be slaves, to do work that we are not supposed to do. Then remember, I was reading a verse, how we can use the opportunities of where we are, what we have. Don't wait to be given everything. And I read Job chapter 39, verse 5 to 8, which he says, Who let the wild dog go free? Who untied his ropes? I gave him the wasteland, wasteland as his home, the salt flats as his habitat. He laughs at the commotion in the town. He does not hear a driver's shout. He ranges the hills for his pastures and searches for any green thing. Talks about an, a donkey or a wild donkey. He doesn't like the life in the city, but he enjoys <clears throat> the places and he loves that those, in t those who stay in the city, but he searches for green pastures, where it is. There are people who think that when they're in the city, that when they have this thing, they have this opportunity or they have this place, is what they will enjoy. But they doesn't know, they don't know that opportunities are where you are and utilize what you have. Therefore, your nature contributes a lot to your success. And that's why if you love rest, then and comfort, you will become a slave. And that why it says, arise and go. This is not a place of rest. Come out of comfort zone and do something great. Giants who are in comfort zone, who are doing work they are not supposed to do. Some of us are in wrong places, operating with wrong things, and therefore we are doing manual work, work that we are not supposed, God has not called us to do. And we fear to risk. And that's now I come to the other point where Moses speaks the tribe of Zebulon and what he says about it. He says the tribe of Zebulon were to come to rejoice in going out. But Isaac in the rain, in tent. But he says, you will celebrate on the feast, on the sand, what's in the sand. When you go out, come out of your comfort zone. When you come out of your comfort zone. This is what he says, rejoice Zebulun and you are going out. And Isaac in your tent. You will feast on the abundance of the sea and the hidden treasures of the sun. When you come out of your comfort zone, you will feast, you will enjoy the abundance of the sea and the treasures that are hidden in the sun. What are the treasures hidden in the sun? What is the abundance of the sea? So it's when you come out of your comfort zone, you will enjoy, there is great provision because we talk about of abundance of the sea, that means there's fish. Fish is in the sea. Fish is connected to provision to food. What is, what is in, in the, the sun? sun? What is what in the is sun? In the sun? Is what? We, have, we, have, I, we have gold. We have silver. So there is money, there is food when you arise and go. Some of your blessings are will find you when you are out in the field doing something. Make a two verse 10, remember, arise and go, for this is not your 
resting place. This is not a place to rest. So the tribe of, of Zebulon, as you have seen, there were people who are people who are uh, businessmen, majanders. But the tribe of Isaacah was scholars. And that's why these people were connected for a particular purpose. A scholar and a businessman have things in common. Therefore, the, uh, Isaac was to teach the Torah, to do research. He had knowledge. He understood what to do. And then in this research, he bring Zebulon was to do business and bring money. And that's why scholars uh, and businessmen can do well. Most scholars are not good businessmen. They can only do a research and hand over the research to, to, to businessmen. And most businessmen are not good scholars. So Isaac was a scholar, had more, tribe of Isaac had more scholars. But the tribe of Zebulun, Zebulun were the tribes that were good in business. They lived near the sea. And therefore, they do a lot of business. So God knows how to connect people. He brings a businessman to a scholar so that when two of them can agree, this one is doing a research and this one brings money to do more research. And then when he does more of that, he, the businessman continues to do their, what do, do, to do business and bring money to the research, the researcher. So that's why Moses says that the tribe of Issachar and the tribes of Zebulon were to something to what to work together, to what to work together. But remember the what? Remember the nature of Isaac was that he loved comfort. He loved comfort. And if you love comfort, what are you going to do? Instead of doing research, you will be there resting. This one is bringing money for research, but this one is good in comfort, is sleeping, is doing things he's not supposed to do. Hallelujah. I don't know if you are getting me. Therefore, is a giant sleeping. This one is busy doing business. And is doing what? Is resting in a wrong place. Because I want you to understand that success is connected to a place. Your breakthrough is connected to a particular place. So when you are in the wrong place, you may miss some things. Because a place plays a, a major role in one's success. Because your success is linked to a place, to a place that God has given you. Because prosperity, promotion, provision are all related or available when you are at the right place. The right place controls the flow of favor and anointing you live in life. The right, remember, the right place controls the flow of favor and anointing in your life. Miracles occur at the right place. So when you are in the wrong place, sleeping at the wrong time, doing the wrong thing, even if you are a giant, even if you are gifted, you are knowledgeable, you'll find they will not be, you'll not have favor and grace to do particular things. And, that, and there, are, there are some places you may feel comfortable the place you may feel so comfortable with may not be the place God has really ordained for you. Some people feel comfortable in the wrong place and they think that it's God's 
plan for them to be there. They think it's God's will. Because sometimes difficult places may turn out to be the right place for your assignment. Difficult places may turn out to be the best place for your assignment. And that's why pray to understand God's will and God's plan for you where you are, what you are doing. Are you at the right place? Are you doing the right thing? Is the potential in you being well utilized? There are great servants of God who changed places before they settled at the place of the assignment. So sometimes you may arise and go that you may enjoy what God has for you. So remember Abraham changed places, Jacob, Moses, Ruth, Esther. They were not comfortable in some places. Jesus was constantly changing places. Sometimes he was received in some places, but sometimes they rejected him in Jerusalem, in Galilee, in Samaria, in Capernaum. He was working with different kinds of people. Therefore, it's your time to understand is the giant in you being utilized? Are you operating in the wrong place? Are you doing the wrong assignment and you are comfortable? See where God has positioned you and make the most of it. Stay in your God-given position. And that's why understand the potential within you. The sons of Isaac were men gifted, but they are men who had the nature of wanting easy things, settling in the wrong place. That's why now I come to something that he says, the Bible says <clears throat> about now what happened to this play, people, the potential people, gifted people connected to the right people. Some of you have grace. Some of you are blessed. You have been connected to a right person that can assist you in your assignment. But what is happening? Because of your nature, you have taken things so lightly and you are going to lose the blessings. You are going to lose even that person will be connected to the right place. And that's, so remember, now, when you continue, you find reach it a time that Zebulon changed partnership. He was connected to Naphtali. Remember, this is a gifted person, great person, Isaac, gifted. But the nature is that you are forcing him to do some things. You force him to do some things. And if someone wants to help you, realizes that you are not willing to move, what will happen? He'll look for the right person to partner with. That's why this change of partnership. Sometimes we have lost important people in life. Men and women would have helped us. Men and women would have taken us to an ever to a level of life, the high level of life, but because of our nature, we are not willing to move. We are not willing to move to another level. We have the, we, we have the character, the attitude that is wrong. We are like forced to do something. So arise and go, for that is not the place of rest. What happens? When you arise, you come out of your comfort scene. I want us, I will give these few things, then we we'll have a song. When you come out of your comfort zones, you will see. You will see. 
Isaiah says that the vision is like a book sealed. Isaiah 29, verse 11 to 12. The book that is sealed is only to be open. And sometimes it's open when you change the place that you feel comfortable. And number two, you will be seen when you come out of your comfort zone, when you arise and go, releasing the potential within you, you will be seen. Remember, in First Samuel chapter 16, verse 18, the people introduced David. The slave someone says, I saw the son of Jesse, of Jesse, a young man gifted. He was seen. And what sometimes when you come out of comfort zone, you will receive divine connection and leading. Arise and go on the way, you will receive divine connection and leading remember you may be looking for something when you are busy looking for something then you'll be connected to the right person that will lead you to your great assignment so when you you'll be connected to your mentor you'll be connected to the man that has knowledge the man that has gifts the man that has finance fin, fin, finances the man can lead you to another level we can just have a song as we continue with the, this message of arising the potential within you. We, we want to continue with our topic of arising the potential within you. That's raising up the giant within you. What I've been saying about the sons of Issachar, men gifted, with the understanding time of times, the knowledge of what Israel should, be do, should do. And they were leaders among the brethren. And they were connected to the right person or the right tribe. Because Isaac was connected to Zebulon. Isaac was scholars. And Zebulon won business, were doing business on the, on the sea. So they had the right people, the right positioning the right connection. But what did they do? Their nature, they loved rest and comfort. That's why we are saying arise and go. Sometimes we need to reposition ourselves for greatness. Spiritual repositioning. Even material, even place, business. Maybe have been struggling so much in a particular place. Sometimes it's important to change place. And I said Zebulon, the name Zebulon means a, a dwelling, a habitation. There were people who are come, who are who are business, but they had also rest in mind. Therefore, when you are connected to the right person and you are also, given the facilities, the items you need to do a, a particular work, and you don't utilize that opportunity, is taken to another person. Arise, come out of comfort zone. On the way, sometimes God will lead you to the right person. Some of you have stayed so long in one place. You are struggling, change positions. Sometimes I look at our country or our continent, Africa. We are gifted. We have minerals. We have gold. We have diamonds. We have land, fertile land, good weather. But we are like giants sleeping in the wrong place and therefore we have become slaves to some things to the waste we have become slaves to some things we are not supposed to be we sell our commodities we sell 
our items. We sell ourselves so cheaply. Though gifted, brilliant brains that are supposed to do research and hand it over to a people, they are in comfort zone. Some of them have retired their minds to places they are not supposed to be. They're struggling in some countries. There's a struggling in some land, struggling in a particular place. A giant sleeping in the wrong place. He has become a coward in a strange land. He has become a slave to forced labor. It's believed that the tribe of Isaac was slaves to the Canaanite. People, they sold their land to the Canaanites. They were occupied by them. It was their land was occupied by them. So Isaac had opportunities. Understanding of times were knowledgeable scholars learn, learning connected to the right person that is a bloom who could finance their projects hallelujah how many people have such opportunities but some of them are wasting the opportunities so what happened when isaac did not utilize this opportunity if you read well in the bible you'll find that most wars you'll find isaac now is connected to naphtali the most wars you'll find and the tribe of zebulon and the tribe of naphtali when so zebulon realized that with naphtali or with the isaac we are going nowhere so the tribe of Zebulon disconnected themselves from the tribe of Is Is Issachar and got connected to the tribe of Naphtali. And by also a few minutes, I'll just talk this. Then we continue next time. We continue this next time, and we also look at the steps in life. How we can move from just ordinary to extraordinary or to supernatural. How we can move from where you are to another level and maintain our position in that level. But I just talk shortly about how Naphtal and Zebulun were connected and they did great work. You've realized Naphtal was the son of Jacob, like the sixth son of Jacob. And the second son of Bidha, Rachel's maid or servant, the young brother of Dan. And the, the name Naphtal means a wrestler, a struggler. The Bible says Rachel's servant Bilha conceived and bore Jacob a second son, then wrestled. Then he said, I have wrestled my sister and have prevailed. So she named him Naphtal. Genesis 30, verse 7 to 8. You find the name means a struggle or a wrestler. The radio wrestled with the sister. I think she was wrestling with the wrong person. Instead of praying for God to give her a son, a, or a, a child, she's wrestling with the sister. And that's why you find the only army in the world that wounds the wounded or wrestles with others, they are Christians. They wrestle with others that are Christians. Don't wrestle with your brother. Don't struggle with your brother. Struggle with the right person or your sister. She says, I've wrestled with my sister and I've prevailed. And therefore, he names the name, she names the son Naphtali. Brethren, 
I think it's not important for us to fight each other. I don't want to talk more about it. But let us look at these gifts that this tribe had. Why Zebulun is connected to them. I'm saying if you don't utilize your gifts, if you don't utilize your resources, if you don't utilize your divine connection, it will be con taken away to another person. If you're wasting your time, your potential, your giant within you is being wasted. Remember, you lose it to another person. So, Zebulon, a businessman, is now connected to Naphtali. Why? This is a great thing to understand. The blessings of Jacob upon Naphtali says in Genesis 49, verse 29, 21, it says, Naphtal is a hind, is a toe, is antelope that is let loose. He gives beautiful words. Naphtal is a hind that is let loose and gives beautiful words. Let us look at this. What happens when a hind or a toe or a female deer is let loose? First understand, Jacob compares Naphtal with the hind that is let loose. He's zealous for freedom. And remember, it's tender, it's graceful, it, and it is lovely. So you find now it's zealous. Zeppelin is being connected to a tribe that is zealous for freedom. Naphtal means a struggle. He struggled against many things. Humble background. The son of a maid, a maid servant called Bilha. The name Bilha means foolishness, fearful. So you find he did not have good background. But because of what of his background, they were zealous for freedom. Remember a person who has been delivered from strong bondages is always zealous for freedom. But those who have been born with some of those who have been some of those who have been born with privileges have taken it so lightly and lost great opportunities. And that's why I challenge you as I finish. Arise. Utilize the opportunity you have been given. As you work, as you utilize also the connection that you have been given. Arise and go. For that is not your place of rest. Arise and do something with what God has given you. The potentials you have, the resources you have, the opportunities you have, the positioning you have. Some of you have been positioned in the right place that you can utilize that to empower your community. You can utilize that to help your brothers. You can utilize that opportunity to bring change in your community, even spiritually, in the work of God. You have been positioned in the right place that you can support the work of God, that you can reach more people. But what is happening? The nature of comfort and resting in the wrong position. I challenge you, arise and do something. That is not it. Where you are, there is an opportunity. If you find you are struggling, sometimes you may be struggling to the right place, but you may be struggling because it's not the right place for you. May the God Almighty reveal to you His will. May the Lord God Almighty Reveal to you where he wants you to utilize the gifts he have given you. You are potential. You are gifted. 
you have right connection. Some of the people you are connected with are men and women of, who can take you far. Don't take it so lightly that you sleep in the wrong place and you, be, you become a slave to the forced labor. You are doing the things you are not supposed to do because of your nature. May the God Almighty reveal to you and stir up the giant within you to arise and do something. You are potential. You are gifted. We are, even in Africa here, we are gifted. We don't want to utilize, our, we, we don't want to miss these opportunities. May the God Almighty be with you. Thank you. I can just pray. Father, thank you for the people that you have called. Thank you, Lord, for men and women who are gifted, for those that you have empowered, those who have divine connection, who have true connections that they can do, go far. But some of them, God, have retired their mind to I cannot do it. They have retired their mind to, to, the, to I cannot make it. Father, reveal to them touch them, raise up a spirit in them that, Lord, they may do greater things. They arise from where they are that they may do greater things. Thank you even for this program. Lord, for your servant that you have given the vision to continue, Lord, reaching more people through this program. Lord, they are utilizing the potential in them and they are reaching more people. Bless this program. Bring, them, bring more people to it, O oh God. Father, we say thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.